work, the defining task of our adult lives, an indicator of status, and a necessity to live. The world around us is built around work. Time. I'm a firm believer that time, your time, should be spent doing something that fulfills you in the big picture and enriches your life. And since so much of our adult lives is spent around work, I want to talk about the idea that your work should not define you, but fulfill you. It should not detract from your mental health, but support it. Earlier this month, I was talking to a friend, Jason. How you doing, Jason? And we were talking about our next steps in life, how uncertain the future seemed, and how far away the next promotion was, and how that made him feel uncertain about himself. Our early lives have been mostly dictated for us, from the moment we're born, to preschool, childcare, to school, to high school, to, for some of us, to university. But then what? What comes next? With the last semblance of structure disappearing, we seek the structure in our work, Monday to Friday, five days a week, nine to five. That's structure. For that reason, many people seek to create a home away from home situation at work. They spend more time at work than not at work. They spend more time with their colleagues than with their friends and family. Spoken about the dangers of not having a purpose outside of work before. You can watch that video after this one. So, given that most of us will have to work, we should at least ensure that that time is well spent. That that time fulfills us in some way, develops us in some way, it enriches our lives in some way, whether it's in a social sense, making sure that you get your daily dose of social interactions, or in a broader sense, where you add value to your community, both online and in real life. If you hate your work, you need to escape it. I think the idea of work should be viewed in two ways. The first, of course, is as a generator of money, a source of income to fulfill your most basic needs. The second is fulfillment or enrichment of our lives. And it is here that the idea of work takes on a much broader meaning. When you build a piece of furniture, you are working at it. When you create a YouTube video, you are working at it. When you are helping those in need, you are working to help others. All of it, your creative endeavors, is work. If your work, and therefore your time, is not spent fulfillingly, then why do it? You might say, for the money. But it does not take much to sustain your life in the literal sense. Basic food, basic shelter, basic clothing. Our most basic needs do not require much to fund at all. Everything on top is luxury. So that means you need to look at your goals and ask yourself, where does money slot in? Remember that it does not take much to sustain your life, but incremental improvements in your quality of life take exponentially increasing amounts to fund. So then, how important are those incremental improvements? How important is driving a BMW over a Toyota? How important is driving a Porsche over a BMW? How important is wearing Nike sneakers over some no-name shoes? How important is wearing the latest Yeezys over those Nikes? How important is going to the nicer restaurant over the hole in the wall? How important is going to that Instagrammable fine dining over the nicer restaurant? Where do you draw the line? I'm not saying you have to be frugal and save every cent. Far from that, no. Instead, I am saying you must weigh the perceived benefits and the costs of your time and your money. Remember the law of diminishing returns. An incremental improvement in your quality of life takes an exponential amount of money to fund. Here's where you have to weigh up your goals and ask, where am I willing to draw the line? How much improvement do I need in my quality of life? Do I need to drive that BMW? Do I need to drive that Porsche? Weigh up your goals of where you want to be in the future against the desires of what you want to consume today. And that is where you draw the line. That's completely up to you. For me, I want the option to retire by age 35. I'm 27 now. It doesn't mean I actually will retire because I enjoy my work. I enjoy teaching young men and women. I enjoy talking with my colleagues. But I want the option to basically at any point in time, if I'm feeling stressed, if I'm just feeling, if I'm just not feeling like it, I want the option to be able to just walk away financially, not having to worry about a single thing. And that goal is within reach for me if I stick to the plan and don't move where I draw that line. So after satisfying our most basic needs and the quality of life improvements that we've chosen, we need to think about what it is that we value. Really take the time to think about it, to journal about it. 
What is it that you want to do? What are your goals? How does the time that you spend move you towards those goals? I know the theme of this video is about work, but really the underlying message is time and how you spend it. It's just that most of us spend our time at work. So what is fulfillment then? So far, it might seem that I've been telling you to live as frugally as possible, spend as little as possible, so that way you can work as little as possible and spend the rest of your time enjoying yourself. I don't mean for you to be a degenerate, living each day as if it's your last, partying hard until the sun goes down and even past that. Nor do I mean for you to sacrifice absolutely everything in the short term to make the proverbial long-term gains. Instead, I mean to strike a balance. Practice delayed gratification. Put in the work today so that you may enjoy the rewards tomorrow. But also reward yourself today for the efforts that you put in yesterday. Earlier yesterday, I was talking to a community of like-minded individuals and the idea of death was brought up. I wrote to them something. I'll put, up, put it up on screen. The key is balance. Fulfillment to me is working towards my long-term goals while still allowing myself to enjoy every moment in the present. It is creating a bond with my colleagues, at least while they are still my colleagues. It is bringing joy to both myself and others. It is adding value to your communities. It's why I do coaching and still teach classrooms of young people. Not because I need the money, but because it fulfills me and it enriches my existence. I get to be part of someone's growth and development journey. And for that, I'm very grateful. I can't tell you how to live your life fulfillingly, but I can share with you my thoughts. If you're in a stressful job that does not enrich you in any way except money, a job that you can't wait to clock out of, then it's time to reevaluate your position and start living your life fulfillingly. That's it from me today. Enjoy. Done.